Hey, what you doing? Well, I'm trying to prepare my history paper. What history paper? It's always in African American history. Oh, that's an interesting title. Let me see. Yeah, but the thing is I'm having problem getting. Girl, let me solve your problem. I have a video that you need to see. It has a lot of information about well-known people who had a part in African-American history. It has students that have speeches, dancing, singing, acting. It basically has everything you need for your assignment. Let's watch it. Okay, let's watch it. I need all the help that I can get. And you too. Let's watch it. Suffering through our sacrifice, we'll be able to achieve the American dream. This will be the day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. of Maya Angelou through her poem, Caged Bird. A free bird leaps on the back of the wind and floats downstream till the current ends and dips his wings in the orange sun rays and dares to claim the sky. But a bird that stalks down his narrow cage can seldom see through his bars of rage. His wings are clipped and his feet are tied. So he opens his throat to sing. The caged bird sings with a fearful trill of things unknown but longed for still. And his tune is heard on the distant hill for the caged bird sings of freedom. The free bird thinks of another breeze and the trade winds soft through the sighing trees and the fat worms waiting on a dawn bright lawn. And he names the sky his own. But a caged bird stands on the grave of dreams. His shadow shouts on a nightmare scream. His wings are clipped and his feet are tied. So he opens his throat to sing. The caged bird sings with a fearful trill of things unknown but longed for still. And his tune is heard on the distant hill for the caged bird sings of freedom. In 1619, 
the first African-American indentured servants arrive in the American colonies. Less than a decade later, the first slaves are brought into New Amsterdam, later New York City. By 1690, every colony has slaves. In the mid 1600s, the slave codes are made into law. Slaves had no access to government, private enterprise, property ownership, or marital relationships. Hear the voice of the slave, performed by Mr. Tyrus Jones. Wait in the water. Wait in the water, children. Wait in the water. God's gonna trouble the water. We cross seas in the hulls of ships. Many of us died crossing those seas. Many of us jumped to our freedom. We cross seas in the hulls of ships. Many of us died crossing those seas. Many of us jumped to our freedom. We were spooned together in the halls of ships. In 1619, the first 20 Africans were brought to Jamestown, Virginia. We were traded for rum, sugar, and tobacco. We were traded for rum, sugar, and tobacco. They put us on the auction block. They would take white gloves, rub their hands all over our bodies to see if we were strong enough, to see if we were strong enough, to see if we were strong enough to be sold like cattle. My name is Thomas Ernest Reynolds. And I come off a plantation in North Carolina, but I was raised on a plantation in South Carolina. I didn't know my mammy too good because they sold me off to this here Joshua Reynolds, who granddaddy ain't nobody but my great great granddaddy. So that naturally makes us cousins. You see, slaves were human beings sold off by other human beings to work they fields, pick they cotton, raise they babies, and make things and invent things that we won't even allow to use. Oh, I get mad about that thing, but you know what? Life being all right by me. You see, I is a free Negro, and I run carry my slave papers Wherever I go, and I was proud to say I was part of the Underground Railroad, <laughs> and Harriet Tubman was my friend. Now, her real name was Armita Ross, and she come off a plantation in Dostra County, Maryland, the Edward Brodus Plantation, and they were known for their basket weaving. Well, from what they say, Around the age of 12, Harriet and this slave was out one day, and this particular slave was causing a ruckus, and the overseer saw him, and he picked up a two-pound grabber, and it jumped it at that slave. Instead of it hitting that slave, it hit Harriet dead in the head and caused her to have what they say a rum, a rum, a fractured skull. But when she come to, she was strong as an ox, tough as a mule, and had eyes so keen she could see through the night. Now, you see the color of my skin? This here allowed me to work in what they call the big house. I was known as a house. They say my mammy was the color of midnight, so she had to work out there in them fields from sun up to sun down. So she was known as a feel. 
That word leave a nasty taste in my mouth. And I advise you not to use it. In your way. Like I was saying, I was a servant boy. And when master and missus would have all them nice fine dinner parties, I would stand in the corner with a big silver serving tray and just drink. Well, they were having one of them nice fine dinner parties, and then come Master Jones and his missus with a sweet gal. Woo! I was kind of sweet on that gal, so we eyeballed each other, <laughs> and we eyeballed each other, <laughs> and we eyeballed each other <laughs> till I got my till I got the nerve to ask my cousin Master Whitley, could I marry that gal? He said, "Sure, Thomas, go right on ahead." Well, on a nice day in May, my cousin, Master Reynolds, gave me a nice coat and a top hat and my sweet gal. Her missus gave her some of the most thin and delicate lace you ever would see. And we had something what we call a matrimony. And we did something what we call jump the broom. Well, we danced and we ate. <laughs> We danced, we ate, we danced, we ate, we danced. And a few hours later, she had to go back to her plantation and I had to stay on mine. Later on that night, my cousin, he was deep in them slave quarters, drunk as a skunk and two times a stank. Miss A, it summons me to the big house. And y'all, that was the longest walk I ever did take. I went through the front door and I climbed up them winding stairs. When I crossed her threshold, she closed the door behind me. Time went on and Things started being real strange. I wasn't working in the big house no more. And my cousin, Master Rim, he won't talk in numbers with me. Yeah, he used to talk numbers with me, but he won't talk in numbers with me no more. Yeah, things were real strange. It was around winter time. And the reason why I know it was getting cold, because the mud flows in the slave quarter, they started freezing over. Well, come Christmas time, my cousin, Master Reynolds, and Miss Ann, they were having one of them nice fine dinner parties, and I know they was going to need me. So I gathered myself, and I started walking up to the big house. Well, as I got to the back door, Miss Bertha, the cook, swung that door open and she threw a dirty pan of dishwater at my feet. And she said, boy, I wouldn't come in here if I was you. Oh, I just scooted past her and I went in that room and I grabbed my silver serving tray and I just started polishing. Woo, I was happy to be back in the big house. And I just started polishing and just started polishing and started polishing. And as I see the reflection in that seven tree, I notice Miss Anne coming down them long stairs. And she looked like she had done swallowed a watermelon seed. My stomach started turning. And I put that tray down and I walked straight out the front door. About two or three weeks later, I'm sitting outside my slave quarter looking up at the north star, ponderous, and I hear wailing coming from the big house. And then I hear a baby cry. I hear wailing coming from the big house and I hear a baby crying. And all of a sudden, 
I hear horse hooves, and they coming close and closer. They coming close and closer. And one eye here can say, nigga, come here. He said, nigga, come here. Yo, they took my hand and tied them to the back of the heart. And I had to run to keep up. I had to run to keep up. I had to run to keep up. The only thing that hurt me is that my cousin, Master Riddler, took a crack at my back with that wheel. They took me deep in the slave quarters to the oldest African down there, and she, she put prime on my back. And it took me a long time to come to. Springtime rolled around, and I'm back at the big house. Oh, yes, I am. I got my silver serving tray again. Well, it was a pretty day, and my cousin, Master Reynolds, and all the other masters from surrounding plantations had gathered to have a meal. Well, while they were standing around smoking their nice, fine cigars, I'm standing there with my silver servant tray just grinning. And no, I ain't nosy. I just use my ears twice as hard to hear and see. They was talking about a woman by the name of Harriet Tubman. Said she was going around to different plantations freeing slaves. And they had a price on her head for $40,000, dead or alive. They didn't want us to read. They didn't want us to write. And they sure didn't want us to praise the law. But we had a certain way of talking to each other. We would beat on tree limbs and take sticks and make certain sounds to communicate. And sometimes we would go down by the river. Yes, we would go down by the river. I'm going to lay down my Burden down by, down by the riverside, down by, down by the riverside, down by, down by the riverside. I'm going to lay down my burden down by, down by the riverside to study war no more. Well, I got the nerve to tell everybody about this woman by the name of Harry. And I told them, if they had the nerve and the courage to follow her, we would. On a nice full moon night. Don't nobody know what direction she come from. And don't nobody know what direction she came. She just appeared with a long barrel shotgun. And if you had the strength and the courage to follow her, you did. Well, we started walking through those woods, and y'all, those woods ain't nothing to play with. You know those red berries and blueberries? We would eat those things to keep us strong, and when our feet were hurt, we would gather elements from the earth, leaves, and pack them in our shoes. And we traveled along the river, and the reason why we traveled along the river, just in case that overseer got in behind us with them dogs, woo, 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 woo. We would jump in the wall and it would cast off our snake. And we would come back out and start walking. Well, right before we got to the Mason Dixon line, <laughs> yeah, we stopped off at Master Joe's plantation and picked up my sweet gal. 
My sweet girl got in line with us with a straw broom. And she started walking backwards. Yes, my sweet girl was walking backwards, covering up our tracks with a straw broom. Yeah, my sweet girl was in line with us. Well, we got up round Delaware, Pennsylvania, the Chop Tank River. And we came across some nice white folks, Quakers, and black folks that were abolitionists who were against slavery, like Frederick Douglass, who, who, who printed the North Star. Well, we would come to what we call a safe house. And if you ever saw a jockey in the yard with the lantern lit, that'll let you know it was a safe house. And when you walked in the house and it was red roses on the table, that would let you know how many fugitives they were holding till they got to the freedom. And them nice quilts, them women folks were so. Oh, they would hang them on the clothesline. Oh, they had certain patterns on them that would let us know what direction to go and what direction not to go. <laughs> oh, we had some things on them folks. Oh, yes, we did. Well, we stopped off at one more field. It was a tater field. And the overseer counted one too many slaves. So we had to dig holes and bear ourselves till the sun went down. We come out them holes and we started walking. Oh, and we walked, <laughs> and we walked, oh, we walked, and we walked. Lord, I could smell my freedom. Lord, I could taste my freedom, and we walked, and we walked until we got up to upstate New York, Niagara Falls, and there was something called a suspension breeze that connected it to Canada. And that, that bridge was dangerous to cross because sometimes the high winds and stuff, that suspension bed, bridge would just sway in the, in the wind and it would be hard to cross. But I tell you, <laughs> I crossed that bridge. Oh, yes, I did. I crossed that bridge as a bell of cotton. <laughs> oh, yes, I did. Yes, I crossed into Canada to receive my freedom. Harriet Tubman, she made over 19 trips to the South, freeing over 300 slaves, and she didn't lose not every one. She even freed her mammy, her pappy, and three of her siblings. Now tell me that ain't a strong woman, strong as an ox, tough as a mule, and had eyes so keen. She could see through the night. Before I leave, young folks, since I've been free there are three days, <laughs> there can't nobody take away from me. And I want you to hear me now. Since I've been free, there are three things that can't nobody take away from me. I can read, <laughs> my God. I can write, <laughs> my God. And I still have my faith in the Lord. I am free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer bound. No more. Chains holding me, my soul is resting. It's such a blessing. Praise the Lord, thank you. Praise the Lord, thank you. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm free.
1712, the New York Slave Rebellion resulted in brutal executions and enactments of harsher slave codes. Hear the voice of Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Paul Lawrence Dunbar was born on June 27, 1872. He was an American poet, novelist, and playwright of the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Born in Dayton, Ohio, to parents who were enslaved in Kentucky before the American Civil War. He is known for his many writings, including the poem, In the Morning, performed by Keisha Sellers. Lies, lies, bless the law. Don't you know that your days are broad? I bet if you don't get up, you little old scamp, it's gotta be some trouble in this attempt. You think I's gotta let you sleep? While I do your room holding up key, hmm, that is a pity how to do. Don't you hear me? Lies, you. I bet if I come across this here floor, you ain't got find no time to slow. Delight shining all in while you sleep. Hmm, this here ain't nothing but a sin. Ain't this candlelight here enough to burn out without a snuff? But you gonna go the whole morning through. Just burn it up the daylight too. Lies, lies. Ain't no need of you turning to that wall. Don't you hear me when I call? I hear that deep bed mattress squeak. Don't you hear me, boys, when I speak? Guess your clock and struck on six. Let me get my dog on stick. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're down now, sir. Mm -hmm, you down. Look at here, boy. Don't you look at me and frown. Now march yourself and wash your face. And don't you splat all over this young place. Get this comb and comb your head. Look just like a doggone fella, baby. Mm. Now, stand there. Oh, I got to make you see. Don't you roll your eyes at me, boy. Don't you roll your eyes at me now. I'll take this switch and, whew, and now look at here. Stand here, say your prayer, hold your head and bow your head, and wait on to this here blessing and say, Lord, every morning on this here place, seems like I start to lose my grace. Now, I didn't tell you to get up and bow your head. Didn't I tell you to wait on to this here blessing and say, Lord, bless this food we buy and eat. Uh -huh. Sit down. Didn't I tell you to bow your head and wait? Bow your head. Lord, bless this food here we want to eat. Sit still, boy. I see your feet. I bet you better not try that day trip again. Give us peace and love. Amen. In 1739, the Stono Rebellion, one of the earliest law rebates, occurred in Stono, South Carolina. 1793, Eli Whitney's 1765 to 1825, cotton gin increases the need for slaves. 1808, Congress banned further importation of slaves. In 1831, in Boston, William Lloyd Garrison, 1805 to 1879, begins publication of the anti-slavery newspaper, The Liberator, and becomes one of the leading voice in the abolitionist movement. By the 1840s, the term, the Underground Railroad, was a part of the American vocabulary. While the numbers is often debated, some believe that between 75,000 and 100,000 thousand slaves escaped to the north using the Underground Railroad. Then in 1847, ex-slave Frederick Douglass published his first anti-slavery newspaper called the North Star Newspaper. In 1849, Harriet Tubman escapes from slavery and becomes an instrumental leader of the Underground Railroad. Many believe that the Fugitive Slave Law of 1850 paved the way for the Civil War by endangering the lives of both escaped slaves 
and free black men and women. Hear the voice of Harriet Tubman performed by Raven Jones. Well, I was born in 1825. My mother's name was Harriet Green. She was owned by Mary Patterson Brodies, and my father's name was Ben Ross. He was owned by Anthony Thompson. Some of the things I actually experienced were actually getting to freedom, but not only getting to freedom, also got 300 other people to freedom, including my family. One thing I remember was the master asked me to help restrain a runaway, but after I refused, and afterwards, the only thing I remember was being scrubbed in the head by something. I earned the title of Black Moses by guiding my people to freedom and also the any kind of connection of the Underground Railroad in 1949. My real name is Aramita Herod Ross Tubbin. I received a nickname Minty from my parents. After Dred Scott unsuccessfully sued for his freedom in 1857, the Dred Scott versus Sanford case, it was decided that Congress did not have the right to ban slavery in the states because slaves, they were not citizens. In 1860, Abraham Lincoln, 1809 to 1865, is elected president in angering the Southern states. 1861, the Civil War begins. In 1863, Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation proclaims that all slaves in, re in rebellious territories are forever free. On November 19, 1863, President Abraham Lincoln delivered what is known as the Gettysburg Address. Two copies was apparently written before delivering the speech. One was a final copy and the other a reading copy. The speech could not be reprinted because Lincoln wrote on both sides of the paper. Hear the voice of Abraham Lincoln performed by Kobe Quick. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in the great civil war testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and dedicated could long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this, this ground. The brave men living and dead who struggled here have consecrated it far above our power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us the living rather to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from this honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion. And we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, that we have highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain and that government of the people by the people for the people shall not perish from this earth in 1863 massachusetts 54th regiment of african-american troops led by Colonial Robert Gold Shaw of 1837 to 1863, marches out of Boston on May 28th, heading into combat. In 1865, the Civil War ends and Lincoln is assassinated. Also in 1865, the 13th Amendment to the Constitution prohibiting slavery is ratified and the era of Reconstruction begins. 
1866, the Black Codes are passed by all white legislators of the former Confederate states. Congress passes the Civil Rights Act, conferring citizenships on African Americans and granting them equal rights to whites. In 1867, the 14th Amendment is ratified, defining citizenships. This overturns the Dred Scott decision. Eighteen seventy, the Fifteenth Amendment is ratified, giving African Americans the right to vote. Eighteen seventy-seven, the era of Reconstruction ends. A deal is made with the Southern Democratic leaders, which makes Rutherford B. Haynes president in the exchange for the withdrawal of federal troops from the South and puts an end to efforts to protect the civil rights of African Americans. Eighteen seventy-nine, thousands of African Americans migrate out of the South to escape oppression. Eighteen eighty-one. Tennessee passes the first of the Jim Crow segregation laws, segregating state railroads. Similar laws are passed over the next 15 years throughout the Southern states. 1887, Augusta St. Gaudens unveils the Standing Lincoln statue in Lincoln Park, Chicago. 1896, Plessy versus Ferguson case. Racial segregation is ruled constitutional by the Supreme Court. The Jim Crow separate but equal laws begin bearing African Americans from equal access to public facilities. Mother to Son by Langston Hughes was first published in December of 1922 in the magazine Crisis. It was also included in Hughes's collection, The Weary Blues, published four years later. This piece is one of the most popular and relatable. Hear the voice of Langston Hughes and Mother to Son by Jasmine Rivers. Well, son, I'll tell you, life for me ain't been no crystal stair. It's had tacks in it and splinters and boards, to boards torn up and places with no carpet on the floor. There, with all the time I've been climbing on and reaching landings and turning corners and sometimes going in the dark where there ain't been no light. So boy, don't you turn back. Don't you sit down on the steps because you find it's kind of hard. Don't you fall now, for eyes are still going, honey. Eyes are still climbing. And life for me ain't been no crystal stair. In 1943, Harold C. Smith was born in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. He obtained his degree in monetary science in 1966 in Nashville, Tennessee. He was one of the pioneers in monetary science in Anson County. To this day, he is known for his many contributions to the civil rights. Hear the voice of Harold C. Smith through Nicholas Spencer. I will have one little rose from the garden of a, a friend than the choicest flowers from my stay on earth and sin. I will have one pleasant smile from a friend I know that is true than tears shed by my casket. I bid this world a better do. So bring me all your choices flowers here today. Whether that be pink, red, white, or blue. Thank you. Cause mother says she better have one little blossom now. The trouble below when she's dead. Thank you. Mr. Harold C. Smith who was born in 1943 in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. He was the youngest of 12 children and was reared in Walnut Club, North Carolina. His long life ambition was to become a mortician. He graduated from John A. Gupton School of Mortuary Science in Nashville, Tennessee in 1966 with honors. He came to Waynesboro shortly afterwards and worked with Haley and Hoggett Furnal Home. Five years later, Mr. Smith became the sole owner of this same establishment, changing the name to Smith's Firm Home. On January 23rd, 1980, Mr. Smith experienced a fire at his firm home. Some assumed that it may have been extra arsenic due to his strong voice of equal rights. But nevertheless, he came back and he stated that he will build up, build up, and better. 
small enough to know you, large enough to serve you too. That which he did, and is still thriving to this very present time after over 53 years and still here. We thank you, Mr. Harold C. Smith, for your strong voice in Black history and also being a pillar to your community. As he already stated, if you came to the pound on the top of the hill, be the shrub in the valley. Be the best little shrub on the side of the hill. Be a bush if you can't be a tree. If you can't be the highway, just be the trail. If you can't be the sun, just be the star. Brain by the side you will obey. Will be the very best of whatever you are. We thank you, Mr. Harold C. Smith, for being the very best. In 1954, the Brown versus Board of Education case strikes down segregation as unconstitutional. In 1955, in Montgomery, Alabama, Rosa Parks is arrested for breaking a city offense by refusing to give up her seat on a public bus to a white man. This defiant act gives initial momentum to the civil rights movement. Hear the voice of Rosa Parks through Jasmine Ocha. Rosa Parks was born on February 4, 1930 in Tuskegee, Alabama and lived to be 92. Rosa Parks was riding the bus after working as her job as a steamtress. Rosa Parks was asked to give up her seat to a white passenger and she refused. She was then arrested for disobeying the Alabama law stating they give up their seats to white passengers. This made many black citizens angry and started a boycott against using buses. After a year of the bus boycott, 1956, the Supreme Court ruled segregation on buses as unconstitutional. Rosa Parks is considered a great inspiration and the mother of the civil rights movement. Emmett Till's untimely death fueled the civil rights movement as well. Hear the voice of Emmett Till through Aaliyah Hershey. Emmett Till was born on July 25th, 1941 in Chicago, Illinois. He was the only child of Lewis and Mamie Till. Emmett Till was born, was a 14 year old African American who was lynched in Mississippi in 1955 after being accused of offending a white woman in her family's grocery store. Several days later, relatives of the woman abducted Till brutally murdering him and disposing of his body in a nearby river. Till's mother insisted on a public open casket funeral for her son to show the violence inflicted on blacks in the South. Martin Luther King Jr. in 1926 to 19, 1929 to 1968 and others set up the Southern Christian Leadership Conference a leading engine in the civil rights movement. In 1963, I Have a Dream was delivered around the Lincoln Memorial. Hear the voice of Martin Luther King Jr. through Nicholas Spencer. I have a dream that one day everybody shall be exalted and every hill and mountain shall be made low. And the rough places will be made plain, and the crooked places will be made straight, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. Yes, this is a hope. This is our hope. This is the faith that I go back down to the south with. With this faith, We'll be able to hear out the mountain of despair a stone of hope. With this faith, we'll be able to transform the genuinely death discourse of our nation into a beautiful symphony. Yes, with this faith, we'll be able to work together 
to pray together, to struggle together, knowing that one day we will be free. Yes, 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 one day we will be free. This will be the day, this will be the day when all of God's children will be able to sing the song with new meaning. My country, it is the sweet land of liberty, of the I sing. Land where my fathers died, land where I have the pilgrims pride, from every mountainside, let freedom ring. And if America is to be a great nation, this must become true. This must become true. And so let, and so let freedom ring from the prodigious hilltops of New Hampshire. Let freedom ring from the mighty mountains of New York. Let freedom ring from the high Alleghenies of Pennsylvania. Let freedom ring from the snow-capped Rockies of Colorado. Oh, let freedom ring from the gracious slopes of California. Yes, but not only that, let freedom ring from the stone mountain of Georgia. Yes, let freedom ring from every hill and mole hill of Mississippi. From every mountainside. And when this happens, and when we allow freedom to ring, yes, sir, when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, yes, from every state and every city, yeah, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children will be able to be the joint hands together. Black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Catholics and Protestants will be able to join hands in singing the words of the old Negro spiritual. Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we're free at last. The Civil Rights Act is signed, prohibiting discrimination of all kinds. 1964, the Voting Rights Act is passed, outlawing the practices used in the South to disenfranchise African American voters. Also in 1965, civil rights leader Malcolm X is assassinated. Malcolm X was born Malcolm Stewart Little on May 19, 1925. While in prison for robbery, he joined a group called the Nation of Islam. He was also involved in the civil rights movement. He protested differently than most activists by using any means necessary. Instead of going a more peaceful route, this was the main reason why Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Jr., another great figure in the movement, did not see eye to eye. But eventually he and King were able to peacefully find a way for equal rights. Malcolm had enemies inside the Nation of Islam, who he once was a part of, this resulted in his house being attacked and burned. He was assassinated on February 21st, 1965. Another important civil rights leader was Megger Everts. Megger Riley Everts was born July 12, 1925. Before becoming an activist, he served in the Army through World War II. He became the first state field secretary of the NAACP in Mississippi. On June 12, 1963, Evers was shot and killed outside his home. Hear the voice of Robert F. Kennedy live through Sherry Dan. The influence of John F. Kennedy and Lyndon B. Johnson on the civil rights movement began in 1957 with then Senate Majority Leader Johnson engineering passage of the 1957 Civil Rights Act, the first of several civil rights acts to be passed. It was considered toothless, 
but it paved the way for future acts that were more beneficial. Later, just a few weeks before the 1960 presidential election, Martin Luther King Jr. was arrested while leading a protest in Atlanta. John Kennedy phoned King's wife, Coretta Scott King, to express his concerns, while Robert Kennedy phoned the judge to help secure King's safe release. The Kennedy's personal intervention led to a public endorsement by the King's influential father, Martin Luther King Sr. Certainly this helped secure the presidential election for Kennedy, which was a crucial step in the civil rights battle. In 1963, Governor George Wallace of Alabama vowed to defend segregation forever and stood in the schoolhouse door to prevent two black students from enrolling at the University of Alabama. But President Kennedy federalized the Alabama National Guard to ensure their safe admission and they succeeded. Then on June 11th, the president addressed the nation with a very powerful speech in which he called for total and immediate desegregation. On November 22nd, 1963, President Kennedy was assassinated and the civil rights bill was left in the hands of then Vice President Johnson. Just five days after John F. K.'s assassination, Johnson gave a passionate plea to lawmakers in which he urged no memorial oration or eulogy could more eloquently honor President Kennedy's memory than the earliest possible passage of the Civil Rights Bill for which he had fought so long. On July 2nd, 1964, the Civil Rights Act was passed and was a crucial step in achieving the Civil Rights Movement's initial goal, full legal equality. 1967, Edward W. Brooks, born in 1919, becomes the first African-American U.S. Senator since Reconstruction. He serves two terms as a Senator from Massachusetts. 1968, Martin Luther King Jr. is assassinated in Memphis, Tennessee. Prior to his death, Martin Luther King requested the song, Precious Lord, be performed at his funeral. The song is a melody written by Thomas Dorsey as a response to the grief he experienced after his wife died giving birth to his infant son, who also passed away. Hear the voice of Thomas Dorsey, performed by Shante Henry Hill. Precious Lord, take my hand and lead me on, let me stand, I am tired, I am weak, I am worn through African-Americans have been inspired and uplifted many. 
Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, Aretha Franklin, to the powerful gospel group, the Clark Sisters, and others. After an American Boys, James' power to the American. When we come back, after American in dance, and the first African American president, and the first African American and Asian American vice president of the United States. Hi, I'm Mike Black. I'm an electronics mechanical engineering instructor here at Northeastern Technical College. I'm Seth Johnson. I teach mechatronics here at NETC. And together we show students how to wire up circuits, learn how to program PLC, do a design electrical circuit to control uh, machine drives, pneumatics, and hydraulics. And after completing this program in our surrounding areas, there are many jobs available such as electricians, maintenance technicians, PLC programmers, and troubleshooters. You can actually get a certificate within six months or continue onward and receive a degree within two years. Some skills you would learn would be how to program a PLC, how to control three-phase motor controls, how to construct various circuits electronically using digital circuitry. For more information, you may contact me at mblack at netc.edu or you may phone me at 843-921-6976. And my email is sjohnson at netc.edu and my phone number is 843-921-6983. So what did you think? I think I really learned a lot from this video, but I think I want to keep watching. It's giving me more idea to prepare my history paper. So can we just keep watching it? I think that's a great idea. Let's keep watching. Okay. Body language is one of the most powerful forms of communication. It can communicate joy or sadness. Dance has a universal voice that touches all who experience it. These are the voices of female African American dancers. Josephine Baker, 1906 to 1975. Catherine Dunham, 1909 to 2006 and Jeanette Collins, 1917 to 2003. Judith Jamison, Marie Bryant, Diane Walker, and Debbie Allen, just to name a few. Born in 1950, the smooth modern moves of dance of Debbie Allen are electrifying and imitated by many dancers today. She is an award-winning actress, director, and dancer who has worked on such projects as West Side Story, Sweet Charity, and Fame. She was featured in both films versions, 1980 to two, and 2009. In the TV version of Fame, Allen is best known for her work in the musical drama television series, Fame, 1982 to 1987, where she portrayed dancer teacher Lydia Grant, Grant Debbie Allen, inspires performers everywhere who has dreams of dancing professionally. Let's 
sky like a flame Fame, I'm gonna live forever Baby, remember my name Another person in the arts known for her dramatic poetry is Maya Angelou. Maya, Maya Angelou was an American poet, memorist, civil rights activist, and she was published seven autobiographies, three books of essays, seven books of poetry, and is credited with a list of plays, movies, and television shows, spanning over 50 years. Hear the voice of Maya Angelou by Tiffany Elliott and Malaysia Williams with Phenomenal Woman. Women wonder where am I? secret lies. I'm not cute or built to suit a fashion model size. But when I try to tell them, they think I'm telling lies. So I say, it's the reach of my arms, the span of my hips, the stride in my step, and the curl of my lips. I'm a woman. Phenomenally. Phenomenal woman. That's me. When I walk into a room, just as cool as you please. And to a man, the fellas stand or fall down to their knees. Then they swarm around me like a hive to honeybees. And I say, it's the fire in my eyes, the flash of my teeth, the swing in my waist, and the joy in my feet. I'm a woman, phenomenally, phenomenal woman. That's me. Now men themselves may wonder just what they see in me. They try so much, but they can't touch my inner mystery. But when I try to tell them, they still can't see. And I say, it's the arch in my back, the sun of my smile, the ride of my breast, my grace and my style. I'm a woman, phenomenally, phenomenal woman, that's me. Now, do you understand just why my head's not bowed? I don't shout or jump about or have to talk real loud. So when you and you see me passing, it ought to make you proud. And I say, it's the click in my heels the bend of my head, the palms of my hands, the need of my care, cause I am a woman, phenomenally, phenomenal woman. That is me. Let us pause for some of our many local African-American heroes. There are so many we may not be able to name them all. Sheriff James Dixon, who was elected the first African-American sheriff in Chesterfield County. For more than 30 years, Sheriff Dixon worked in law enforcement. He has served as a chief deputy responsible for administration for the sheriff's department as a major senior command level, skilled in problem solving and execution as captain managing duty operations as sergeant, supervising deputies, and as the first narcotics officer for the city of Bennettsville, South Carolina. In 2001, Pastor Garcia L. Mormon Sr. organized an extensive Carolina Hurricane Katrina effort. He pulled a tractor trailer into the parking lot of a Carolina Walmart with one purpose in mind, and that was to fill it with supplies then he traveled to Louisiana, distributing those needed supplies to Katrina victims. Then there is Harvard and South Carolina's own Academy Award and Golden Globe nominee, Joshua Campbell, whose outstanding writing skills enabled him to pin the song to the movie Harriet. Then there is Dizzy Gillespie, world-known musician from Sherrill, South Carolina. We would like to recognize African-American trailblazers and Northeastern Technical College Board members, Mr. Hubert H. Cloud and Dr. Mia Cole and Dr. Gregory McCord, 
as well as the first African-American sheriff in Richmond County. Sheriff James Clemens and the late Macy McQueen is just to name a few. Throughout history, many African-Americans made an impact in the political arena. Shirley Chisholm became the first woman and the first African-American to run for major political party's presidential ticket. In 2008, Barack Obama, born in 1961, becomes the first African-American to win the United States presidential race. In 2021, Kamala Harris became okay, the first female African-American and first Asian-American yeah. vice president. You know it. Okay. Hear about these individuals through the voice of Shabria Hicks. Barack Obama was born on August 4th, 1961, in Honolulu, Hawaii. He is the parent, he is the son of parents from both Kenya and Kansas. He had attended school in Punahou, Hawaii, and after graduating from Columbia University in 1983. He worked as a community organizer in Chicago. In 1983, he went to Harvard Law School, where he was the first black person to be president of the Harvard Law Review. Obama later met Michelle Obama at the law firm in Sydney and Austin. On October 3rd, 1992, they got married, and together they have two daughters, Malaya and Sasha. After serving on the Illinois State Senate, Obama was elected a United States Senator representing Illinois in 2004. On November 4, 2008, Obama had defeated Republican nominee John McClain and had become the 44th President of the United States and the first ever African American to hold this position. His running mate, Delaware Senator Joe Biden, had became Vice President. Obama campaigned on an agenda of financial reform, alternative energy, and reinventing education, as well as health care, all while bringing down national debt. Obama ran a second time in the 2012 election, where he faced his Republican opponent, Mitt Romney. On November 6, 2012, he won a second four-year term as President of the United States. Barack Obama's final words as president were, together we can. Obama is known for his love of the hymn, Amazing Grace, written by former slave trader John Newton, whose voice changed from slave supporter to abolitionist, fighting against slavery after becoming a minister. His voice, I was once was blind, but now I see, is one of hope and love for one's fellow man. Kamala Harris made her debut into the world on October 20th, 1964 in Oakland, California. Harris's mother had immigrated from India to attend the University of Columbia, where she then met Harris's Jamaican father. Harris attended Westmont High School in Quebec, Canada. She later returned to the States to enter Howard University in Washington, D.C. She, she was elected to the Liberal Arts Student Council. Harris then enrolled at the University of California, Hastings College of the Law, and incurred J.D. in 1989, which paved the way to becoming a lawyer. Harris later began her career as a deputy district attorney in Almeda County. She became manager of the Career Criminal Unit in the San Francisco Di District Attorney's Office in 1988. And in 2000, she was appointed chief of this community and neighborhood division. During this time, she had established the state's first Bureau of Children's Justice. In November, 2016, Harris had handedly defeated Congresswoman Loretta Sanchez for a United States Senate seat, becoming the second African American and the first ever South Asian woman to enter the Senate. On, on August 11, 2020, presidential hopeful Joe Biden announced that he had chosen Kamala Harris as his running mate for the 2020 presidential election. This making Harris the first ever Asian Black woman to be nominated for a national office. On November 7, 2020, four days after Election Day, Joe Biden was declared the 46th President of the United States, making Harris the first ever female Vice President. Hey, what did you learn from watching the program? Girl, I have learned so much. 
Do you mind if I read how you plan to conclude your paper? I don't. Go ahead. In 2021, it is important that we remember the voices, for they are witnesses to the fact that regardless of the struggle, plan, loss, and heartache, that we make it by striving for a better day. For heaven's veil holds the voice of the slave who cried out to God while beaten and mistreated. Heaven holds the voice of a president who made a decision simply because it was right. Heaven is filled with the voices of all people whose motives and actions were fueled by love. Can you hear them? They are telling us to run on. Don't give up. Things are going to get better. So when discouragement tries to creep in, keep heaven in your view. Girl, that is really deep. Heaven holds all those voices. Can you hear them? I can hear them. Can you? With the May of mine, with the May. to go all the way through and if it cost my life I'm willing to pay the price for I got heaven Heaven. 